That was scary. I don't know what I'm doing. Because. But that he thinks. Did you guys hear that? If I get murdered. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish. if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. How are you? We're great. It is about to be the weekend. I have a friend coming over tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow to play with a drum carter. It's right behind me. I just emptied this tub, you guys, and I thought it was gonna go in my bathroom, but it's not. So now I have this big empty thing to fill with yarn, yay! I really wanna make another hero cowl, but I wanna do it out of the leftover sock yarns that I have. I've showed you this tub before, but let me get it. So this is a, a thing from Target. It's like supposed to be an end table. It has a little top that you can put on, but I use it and then I also filled it with leftovers from socks. Yes, I swear. And then it's been slowly building up. I also have a beekeeper's quilt that, I mean, it started, but I haven't worked on it in a while. That's one of those things where you can pick it up, not have to think about it too much, knit on it, you know, maybe knit 10 hexes and then forget about it for a while, which is kind of nice. And then I also have a Mystic Lanterns going out of this bucket. Hang on, let me show you that. Mystic Lanterns is a crochet pattern. I only have a few strips together. <laughs> And I'm actually crocheting a new strip on right now. See how it's like hanging off. But, so this is all leftover sock yarns. Isn't that so pretty? I mean, it's gonna be gorgeous when it's done, but again, it's just one of those things where I'll like crochet a whole strip, um, attach it, and then put it aside for a while and then do another one. The mitered squares blanket was the same. I would just, like knit maybe a whole row on or two rows on and then put it away. It took me like seven years or something to get it all the way done because I didn't work on it like flat out. And also I kind of think of it as just not a real work in progress. That doesn't make sense, but that's how I think of it because it's supposed to be a super long-term project. It's supposed to get put away sometimes. Anyway, God, that was a long way of saying, oops, now I dropped it that I thought I would go through this, see if I could put together maybe one or two, um, like colorways, I don't know. I, part of me says like, just pull things out at random and make a hero cowl out of them and see how it looks. Because part of me thinks that that would be like so, so cool and beautiful. But then part of me is like, no, you should separate those colors into like, you know, a purple, green, blue section, an earthy autumnal color section, and then like a pink, orange, red section. So I'm not exactly sure what's gonna happen, but I'm gonna dump this out on my table and we're gonna start sorting through. And I think what I will do is like sort through um, and do sort it and then I'll decide, am I actually going to separate it like do three different cowls because this thing is getting so full and I mean I have friends who have sent me their own leftover sock yarn to put in my blanket back when I was working on it earlier and running out so you know I feel very lucky that I have that but this is getting kind of full and weaving would be a great way to use up some of it um, I mean I keep it for this I keep it so I'll have all these to use in any kind of project I want and I use it a lot, um, but it's all fingering to sport weight. There are very few sport weights, but there are a few in here. I'm gonna have to adapt the pattern because it is made for, I think, worst weight yarns. So I'll have to adapt the pattern, but that's easy, you know. And um, I guess we need to get on with this day because it's like, I don't know, eight o'clock in the morning. What time is it actually? It is 7.51 and we got a lot going today, so let's go.
All right, so here is, here is the table, it's done. And I've made some choices and some decisions. What I'm gonna do is I need four ounces for what I've decided to do. I need four ounces of one of these sets and then I need four ounces of a more neutral color. So I've decided to go with the kind of fall colored, which is this one right here. I'm gonna lean, oh, look, you've got my bathroom paint chips too. It's gonna be so fun. So this is the grouping I decided to go with, and to me, this is like autumn colors. I needed a lighter neutral to go with, so I pulled out, this is from my sock stash. It is a Malabrigo color called Gingy. Where is that, yeah. So I'm going to use this for my neutral. I'm gonna use a combination of almost all of these. I'm gonna take out the ones that are very close to Gingy because they won't have enough um, contrast. I think this might be the only one that has to come out. This is gonna become a hero cowl. I don't know if all the colors will get used, probably not, but we only need four ounces of this, so I don't need all of them. And I'm excited, so let's get going. I need seven and a half feet, so I measure from the back of the warping bar to the loom. I'm at seven and a half feet, so I'm gonna go get my weights. I thought I'd quick show you guys this because it happens to everybody and everyone is like, oh man. I almost warped this backwards. The base and everything is in the right place. It's the correct orientation, but when I actually set my loom onto the base, I did it backwards. My center is marked. This is the center of the settle. I just leave that on all the time and then like I add other strings different times. I'm just gonna measure it this time and start five inches from the center and then go through this. Also because I'm gonna warp it double, I'm gonna warp through holes and slots like right now so I don't have to slay it later. It really doesn't matter if you do that or not but um, that's how I'm gonna do it. It's just I like to not have to slay it after. This is my final warp. I'm gonna come back here where you can kind of see the color. I don't know, maybe a little bit better. Can you even? Uh, we just gotta get it wound up. Pretty easy. That took like 30 minutes. <laughs> Can't complain about that. Sometimes when I can, I just trap the mylar <laughs> in the warping bar. Top down, that'll hold it all in. Sometimes the mylar is like all wibbly and it wants to fall off, but this is the perfect width for this sheet so I can trap it and it's so much easier if you can do that. Ah, such an awkward angle. There. And then you can leave in 
the um, the dowels if you want to. It's just really up to you, really. So I'm all wound up with mylar. So now I'm gonna put my lock on and wind this a little bit. These are, I think, 18 by 22 sheets of mylar, so they're like perfect for this size project. And you literally can just put some tension on with one hand. And as you unwind it, from your bar, you just wind it onto the back. So freaking easy. We're all the way to the end. You can see because I'm at the trick sheet. So, I'm just gonna undo these a little. You do not have to go all the way. Take out my pegs. All I need to do now is really tie to the front beam and then I'm ready to weave. I don't know why I don't make more of these because the warp was so easy the first time and this time was really easy too. Like why did I not do more of them? They're so pretty. When you weave one of these, you have to wind the first 12 inches onto, oh, how did I mark it last time? I can't remember. Onto your cloth beam. I'm gonna put the teeny tiniest little mark on here just so, let's see, we're gonna start from here. I just wanna make sure I have 12 inches at least. So, so we're gonna go three inches to the back of this and I'm gonna put a teeny mark, super small. Also, when I do the end part, it's going to like, I want to start with a color stripe. I'm going to go ahead and wind my shuttles with two different colors and then just start going with the stripes. I am, um, I'm gonna be random about it in the same way. Um, we're just gonna start weaving. Okay, 
Let's move. So I need to do one more color stripe and then we're going to do the magic of the hero cowl. I've done it before. Um, it's been a while and the last time I actually messed it up and it was hilarious. I guess I'll link that one because it's really funny. Well, I guess while I'm doing this one, I'll tell you what happened. What happens is you take, you cut the material from the front and then you bring it like you wind this part back on just the cloth, but you leave the front of this loose. I'll show you actually how to do it, but then you take it and you turn it and you weave it into this part, okay? Like I said, I'll show you how that works. I know that the description wasn't so great, but somehow when I did it last time, I <laughs> wound the cowl around, I think it was this beam. So I couldn't take it off the loom. I guess I could have taken that beam out and I never even thought about that. I just undid it and then did it again. This time we're not gonna do that. We're gonna make sure that I'm not wound around a beam. <laughs> It was really funny. I don't know if anyone else has ever even done that before. Maybe I made a new mistake. I'm so inventive when it comes to messing up. <laughs> I'm a little nervous to, I'll just tell you guys the truth, because this is all sock yarn. I'm like a little bit nervous that when I wash it, um, and then trim the ends, the ends are gonna wanna pop out because it's super washed, so it won't wanna felt. Five, six, seven, eight, nope, that's eight. Okay, perfect. So that is my whole stripe. Down. Pull my ends in. Cause you can see my ends are all over the place, which is not a big deal, actually. Okay, so here's what you do. I might have to look at my instructions again because for some reason, the next part is kind of confusing for my brain. Oh my gosh, so look how cool this looks. I love this, I'm obsessed. Okay, so now what you do is cut this off the front. I wanna cut it kind of straight, so I'm gonna hold it back here and then cut it right across. This scissors is terrible. Okay, so let me quick cut my lashing off. All right, so don't get the impression that these break a lot because the entire time I've had this loom, I think this is the fourth time I've broken one. So let's see, about 30 centimeters. right roughly here so it says 30 centimeters which is about 12 inches from the back of the weaving okay you're gonna take your weaving and oh my gosh I got to make sure I get this right fold there back is that right this way the other way that's why. Okay, so 12 inches, let's measure it. What's the matter, will we? All right, so 12 inches is just about the end of the stripe and you fold it under like this. So your newest weaving is on the top and the first stuff you wove is on the bottom. Don't mess this up, Trish. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna keep that folded right there. And I'm gonna catch this paper between the apron rod and the beam. I'm gonna roll it up until it's caught so that I don't have to fiddle with that too because it's too much stuff.
Then I'm going to go back and grab that folds and go over the bean. And I need to catch this whole chunk of material, the whole chunk. That's the technical weaving term. Okay, so I caught it. That's good. Am I locked? Yes. Now I'm going to let a little bit of this go in the back. And I'm going to just go a little further. See this? Now I've got all the space here that's warp. I need to tighten up this last couple of wefts. And I'm going to go back just a hair. Okay, so now here's this magical part. You're going to take this end the beginning and you're going to weave it in to this end. Okay. Is that crazy? Yes. Am I doing it? Yes. So the first one is the really the hardest one and I do have it set up already. What I want to do is take, where is my, this one. I just want this little shuttle to guide each string in as I go. So, I guess I'll, I never know what to do with this part while you're doing it, but it's okay. There, put it right there. And I'm gonna go all the way across. And then feed it in. And then drop your petal to the next position. Grab the next strand. And feed it in. And change positions. So you're just going to go all the way across. morning look I'm still in pajamas <laughs> so I wanted to show you guys this because this is not actually part of the directions um, if you were gonna cut fringe or cut fringe if you're gonna tie fringe on this which is kind of part of the design I mean I guess you could still do it without fringe I don't know how I guess you could weave the ends in I don't know you could still do it but um, a lot of people are twisting the fringe. I decided to go ahead and tie the fringe on the pieces that I had to weave in while it's on here. And I'm going to show you why. Because it wants to spread at the end, of course, because there's like no, no salvage edge holding it in. So I'm just tying this while this is still on the loom. I'll have up at the other edge of it because you, you wear it with this right here this square of material right in front of your neck. So I'm gonna tie all the fringe, um, see how far it spread while this is on here, but I'll have a lot of extra to keep it from spreading that way up here, so I'm not worried about that. I'll do this at my kitchen table, but I'm gonna knot this fringe while it's still on the loom.
Isn't that so cool? I don't know why. I never get tired of doing this. And it always, I mean, it's not a new thing. You know what I mean? So I need to go set this up on my kitchen table and not the rest of this fringe. And now I'm gonna knot the other side of the fringe. And I, I always find this kind of hard to do because you're trying to put tension against the fabric. So I thought I would try and capture it with the warping bar to knot the fringe. I wanna make sure it's hanging all the way off. Let's see if this works. I feel like it might. Cause that bevel in there should hold it really securely if I just um, tighten the wing nuts down on it. So I'm gonna start at this end, yes, and just go through and knot. I'm gonna cut my fringe really fast. Okay, the background is super weird, but look how cute this is. I'm sorry about the striped shirt. Probably not its best foot forward. Look how cute this is. Ah! <laughs> okay, wait. So then let's put this. I mean, you can do quite a bit of stuff with these. I've seen so many really cute like ways to wear them and I know the ends are still on it because I want to wash it a couple of times before I trim ends so they can really settle into a position because this is all super wash sorry my hair too <laughs> these are so cute and so much fun and I don't know I might have to just make a whole bunch with all that leftover yarn because they're just gorgeous no matter what you do I guess you could tuck it. Let's see how that looks. Kind of partially tucked. <gasps> so cute. So I guess I'm gonna put this in the shop though because you can see that the beige is not great on me. That's okay though because I have plenty more yarn and you know me, I'm gonna be weaving more. <sighs> love it. I love this. I'll see you Sunday. Thanks. I love you. Bye.